Welcome to Passion Church. For more information about Passion Church, please visit us online at www.passionchurch.tv. Now let's join the service already in progress. called I Love My Church, and I just want to tell you this morning, I love my church. Now, I need to differentiate because we throw that word around a lot. I, I love my church. I, I, I'm not talking like I love my church like I love, and no, now I don't get to eat, but I love chocolate long johns. Anybody else? In, I lo- That's my dad's fault. He used to stop every morning on the way to school and get us a chocolate long john and something that must be manna called a buttermilk crisp that I can't find anywhere else. It it was manna from heaven. And and I I love that stuff, but not like I love my church. I I, I need to differentiate. I, 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 I love OU, but it pales in comparison to how I feel about my church. I love hunting. I know some of y'all are like tree huggers and, 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 and you don't want to kill, you don't want anything anybody kills. By the way, when you go to the grocery store, okay, let's get, a, let's get a clue. When you go to the meat department, somebody somewhere killed something. That didn't grow on a vine. Uh, so I love hunting, but not like I love my church. And so I said to you uh, the first week, I said it like this, and I'm going to repeat it exactly word for word because I wrote it down like this on purpose. I love my church at a deep, emotional committed level and then I described the church because I want you to understand what we love I love the ragtag the flawed the diverse the difficult the distracted the beautiful the caring the powerful the incomparable the influential church that's the church I love with all the warts with all the the you know uh, church is just made up of people so with all the people all of them all y'all, I still can say and declare that I love my church. That is an odd sound for many of you. For many of you, you would say, you know, that statement sounds foreign to me because uh, I, may, I might even have to force it. Because of some of the experiences you've had in life, when we start talking about I love my church, that is an odd sound to you. Uh, you, you might say, well, I enjoy church. And I I, I actually spend effort to get to church. I, I visit church. I, I, I attend church on a regular basis. I go out of my way to be here. I even serve at some level or in some function. But 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 love kind of reminds me of the some of y'all basketball. Y'all remember Allen Iverson going, practice? Practice. We're talking about I, I want to take that to love. I, I like my church. I tolerate church. I I enjoy church, but love, and so we've been saying this, you ought to love the church. The reason you should love the church is because Jesus loved the church. In fact, scripture that I read you in week one proves to us that Jesus loved the church so much that he died for the church. He gave his own life for the church. We should love the church because the church is Jesus' preferred method for serving and saving people. We never impact anybody except through the, the influence and the work of the church because that's his chosen method. It's what he does. And then last week, uh, Pastor Woody talked to us about the fact that we should love the church because the relationships that we establish inside the church, they are essential for our correction but also for love. We need one another to correct one another and love on one another. So this week, I want to kind of wrap this up before we actually get together next week in one service and celebrate our anniversary and that God brought us all together. And we're going to really talk about uh, just kind of have a love fest next week that we love each other and that we, okay. Uh, but but so I, I need to, to wrap this up this morning. So I want you to join me in a very familiar passage of Scripture. And I'm going to read it to you two ways. I'm going to read it to you out of the message uh, paraphrase so that that you can, uh, maybe it will spark a new way of understanding because sometimes we hear something so often that we don't understand or we just ignore what it says. And so I'm going to read it to you like you've heard it. I'm going to read that one second. I'm going to read it to you out of the message so it'll sound a little different, maybe catch your attention. Matthew chapter 18, 
beginning in verse 18 down through verse 20. Take this most seriously. A yes on earth is a yes in heaven. A no on earth is no in heaven. When you say to one, what you say to one another is eternal. I mean this. When two of you get together on anything at all on earth and make a prayer of it, my Father in heaven goes into action. That's a powerful statement. And when two or three of you are together because of me, you can be sure that I will be there. Now, this is the way we learned it when I was growing up right here. Matthew chapter 18, 18 through 20. Verily I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again, I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that, that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. That's the old King James that we learned it in, all right? But, but out of this, I want to make two statements to you this morning for, for the, that will kind of talk to you about why I love my church. The first one is this. Together, we get things done. All right, I got no help. All right, I, I couldn't. I'm talking about cooperation here, so cooperate with me. Together, we get more things done, right? We get more things done. Uh, I, I realize that it's obvious, but I want you to know that because we have a tendency to overlook or ignore or discount what is obvious, I'm going to make a very obvi obvious observation this morning, but I don't want you to miss it. Notice that Jesus says in Matthew chapter 18 that we have so much power that whenever we, whatever we release or bind here finds itself released or bound in heaven. Okay, y'all didn't act very excited about that. I need you to just stop. I'm going to say it one more time. I think you missed it. See, we've heard it so many years that we've forgotten what we're... This is a mind-boggling statement that we count and we consider as ordinary. Whatever we bind on earth is bound in heaven. And whatever we loose on earth is loosed in heaven. That is a mind-boggling statement. That is a, a statement that reveals that we have unbelievable power. Power. Look at your neighbor and say, you strong. You're, okay. We are so powerful that when we come into agreement, heaven agrees with us. So we, now, here's the, here's the dilemma. We can get all, all caught up in that. And I've seen this happen. We go around trying to bind and loose things because we think we've got all this power and all this authority, right? Y'all are quiet this morning. Are you here this morning? Okay. We get all caught up and I bind and I loose and all that kind of stuff. And what I've, what I've recognized is that a lot of times we, we're really not binding and loosing very much. Okay, I'm not preaching about you, I'm preaching about me. Have you noticed that, that we can go through seasons of our life where there doesn't seem, we don't seem to have that kind of authority, that kind of power? May I suggest to you that Jesus adds a contingency clause. Yeah, I hate contingency clauses in most cases, but there is one in this one. Here's the contingency clause. He says, the power that I'm telling you that you have, this power to bind, this power to loose, this power to send God into action is contingent upon this. Two or three of us coming into agreement. Okay. So the obvious truth is this then. If we aren't binding or loosing anything and nothing is moving, it's not because we don't have power. It's because we don't have unity. This is going over huge. It's not that we have a power shortage. We have a shortage of people that are willing to touch and agree. We have a, a shortage of people that are willing to come into an agreement. And Jesus says that when you do come into agreement, you have all this power and all this authority. So it's, it's obvious and logical to, then to assume that if we are not in agreement, we have no power and no authority. All right? So we must agree. If we could ever get a church, if we could ever get a body, if we could ever get a group of people to come together and agree, we are unstoppable. And in fact, according to the way the Message Bible said it, we put God into action. Think about that. When I come into agreement, the reason I love being with y'all is even on a quiet day, 
but I am coming to church. Uh, even on a, on, a, on a Sunday when you're more quiet than I like, as long as we're in agreement in that moment, we put God into action. That means that, that, that we mobilize God. Now, we ought to know this. All right, do I, okay, I'm going I'm to go old school on just for a moment, okay? Some of y'all not old enough for this, so you're just going to have to join in as, and act like you, like you know. All right, you're not cool enough for old school, so we're going to go old school for on, on the remote. Do I have any booster band rock stars in the, in the, how many of you ever were a part of a booster band? Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So, how, okay, put your hand down. How many of you don't even know what a booster band is? Raise your hand. Oh, my word, you deprived generation. You brood of, oh, no, that's a different type of booster. A booster band was when we used to bring the kids' church in every Sunday morning, and we gave them instruments like sandpaper blocks. And you didn't know? Okay. You didn't know what's called a booster band? That's a booster band. See, you come to church, you learn stuff. All right. Sticks and bells and triangles, and we would sing all these silly, silly songs. Except for the fact that the songs were fraught with unbelievable truth. They were silly so that we would remember them. So I'm going to call from the dregs of your memory, all right? There was this song that we used to sing. It would get stuck in your head, so you're welcome. Before we even get there. I'm going to read the words, then we're going to sing the words, and some of you rock stars from Booster Band are going to have to help your neighbor and show them the motions because every good Booster Band song. You remember that one? Okay, that. Okay, some of y'all don't know. Some of y'all don't know. Just ask the gray hair folks sitting around you. We're not going to sing. That one's just free. All right. All right. Here's the one we're going to refer to. When we all pull together, 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 when we all pull together, how happy we'll be. For your work is my work and our work is God's work. When we all pull together, okay, stand up, stand up, stand up, stand up. This is Booster Band Indoctrination. 101. Julie, come here, get a mic, because I ain't doing this to them. <laughs> or on the keys, I don't care, I'll hold the mic for you. Okay, there were motions. How many of you know the motions? Oh, my word. You, you poor people. I'm concerned for your salvation. All right. Who knows the motions? All right, look, everybody turn and look at my family. They all know the motions. All right, everybody look at my family back there. Okay, show them. Okay, here we go, Julie. You're going to sing it. I'm not singing. One more time. Now everybody's got to do the motions. All right, here we go. Julie started. When we get a partner. anymore. Yeah, we indoctrinate you into the booster band. Yeah. So as five and six years old, we knew this truth, but we seemed to forget it. When we work together, we're happier. Now, but there's another truth that you need to hear because it, it, it was, I don't even have to change the words. It, your work is my work and our, here it is, our work is is God's work. If we would ever understand that when we get together, we get more things done, not because there are more of us, but because in that moment, God gets involved. 
He begins to operate. Pulling together or agreeing makes us happier, and then it allows God to get in our midst and work because when we're working together and in agreement, we mobilize God. How many, okay, so I'm, I'm going I'm to prove this to you. I got some things I need to say to you. How many needy folks were you able to feed last month? Think about that. By yourself, how many needy folks were you able to take care of last month? Because last month, together, we took care of 266. Okay? Uh, it, it's going to get better. Uh, how many families who are struggling to keep their lights on or need a repair at their house that they cannot afford have you been able to deal with in the last two years? Because together, we've helped at least 12 families keep their lights on or do some kind of repair at their house that they would have never been able to do by themselves. Um, okay, it gets better than that. Uh, we, uh, How many coats were you able to distribute to the needy folks, that little kids that ha don't have a coat? How many coats all by yourself were you able to provide for, for needy families last Thanksgiving? Because together, last Thanksgiving, we helped distribute together 4,500 coats. Okay, you're getting it now. Um, how many families of, that have children that have special needs, how many of those kind of families have you been able to like call them up and say, hey, we'll give you a break on a Saturday night so that you and your wife or you and your husband can go out and spend some quality time together because you never get a break? How many of you done that for? Because together, over the last couple of years, we've done that for 10 families every month. Together. Um, how about this one? How many or how much support have you been able to send to the missionaries in the last few years? Just you, all by yourself. Because together, in the last, uh, since just since uh, 2012, I went and looked it up. Just since 2012, we've sent $53,000 to missionaries together. How many kids have you been able to give scholarships to? I'm not talking about your own kid that you're paying for everything. How many scholarships, <laughs> designated scholarships, because uh, we've given our students $11,000 since 2012 together. Okay, how many people have you been able to lead to Jesus by yourself in the last six years? No idea? Did you know that since 2010, we have seen exactly 250 people give their heart and lives to Jesus because of what we do together? So together we, 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 we have this ability. How many hearts have you been able to mend by yourself? How many in desperate need have you been able to, 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 to rescue? How many people that are in desperate need of relationships have you been able to release or, or to embrace? It isn't that, and I, I will never diminish or play down your individual responsibility because we all have it. It's all, we all have an individual responsibility. It's just this, together we do more. In every category, we are much more equipped and able to, to pull our resources together and impact people when we're together. When we're together. So you're going to help me preach, right? So, so, so are you pulling together? Or are you pulling with? Or are you pulling apart? Because if we can get together, God does things. So we're going you're gonna to help me preach for just a minute. I, I want you to do this. According to what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 18, when we agree, God goes into action. So let, let's, get, let's just get this real practical. Um, what if your neighbor sitting next to you this morning has an area in their life where they need God to intervene and come through? According to what Jesus said, the answer to that is found when we agree because then God will go into action. And they've been praying for it all by themselves, but they need somebody. So this is what I want you to do. This will make some of y'all uncomfortable, but you're helping me preach right now. I want you to look at your neighbor and say, ask them this question. What can I believe with you about today? Ask them, what's their need?
All right, it doesn't just say we inform one another because if all you get is that information, nothing changes. It says that we agree. So the person you talk to, stay with them. You're going to have to go back over there, Jesus. Here you go. Have to stay with them. I want you to grab their hand. And for just, we're not going to like pray marathons here. I just want you to pray for that need right now. Come on. Pray. Pray in agreement. I believe for this, Jesus. They express this need. And right now, we come into agreement right now. Jesus name. Amen. All right, stay stay close. If you're here this morning and you have a physical need, you need a healing. I want you to raise your hand right now. I need God to heal me. Yeah, keep it up. Keep it up. All right, if you're anywhere near them, would you lay your hands on them because we can touch and agree, right? So let's pray right now. Anybody, if you need a physical healing, keep your hand up until somebody puts their hand on you. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus name, right now, we take you at your word. Your word declares that when we come into agreement, at that moment, God, you go into action. So we claim healing right now. We claim physical healing right now. Whatever the situation is, a back, a heart, a a, a leg, an arm, whatever it might be, God, I pray in the name of Jesus right now that you would bring healing into their life and we touch and we agree that you can make it happen. We claim that as part of the authority that you've given us in agreement and in unity. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. Amen. All right, now, I want you to do one more. I want us to get together in care because when we're together and there's agreement, we got to agree, I care about you. That's one of the agreements we got to make. I care about you. So would you find somebody right there around you and would you just look them right square in the eyes, tell them, I love you, I appreciate you, I need you. So together, we are more effective, and together we're more efficient, and together we're more attentive, and together we are more influential, and together we are more powerful. We get more things done. Are y'all ready to preach? You want to preach? All right, here we go. I brought my can to church, all right? I I got, now y'all know this wasn't for me, because there ain't no, in fact, I'm glad we're getting this out of my pantry at home, make some, make some room for some good stuff, like. Something chocolate. No, I ain't doing that one neither. I ain't doing none of these. You ain't got to worry about me. So these are onion baked beans. Why in the world? All right. So pretty impressive, right? One can. I can probably feed, well, with onion baked beans, I could probably feed a whole bunch of folks because they might not want to eat them. But but anyway, um, I could, by myself, I can probably take care of one person. Pretty impressive, right? I want to show you. You're helping me preach. I want you, if you brought your can to church this morning, I want you to stand up right now and come and set that next to my, my can. Bring your can and put it next to my can. Some of y'all preaching good. Now I want you to look. Look at this. All right. By myself, 
I got some nasty baked beans up here somewhere. <laughs> and all we did to change the scenario and what we could do and impact that we could have is we got our cans together. All we did is we, co we got our cans together. Do I need to say it? We got to get our cans together on more than just cans. Right? Because it, it enables us to do more things. There, there, there's a second one, I, and, I, and I promise I'll, I'll move quickly. I just I want to say to you, not only do we get more things done, but together we're stronger. We're so much stronger. We're told in Leviticus chapter 26 and verse 6, and then again in Deuteronomy chapter 32 verse 30, that when we are being used by God, that one can put a thousand to flight. But listen to this, two can put 10,000 to flight. That sounds like faulty math. I mean, I'm horrible at math, but that is terrible math. If Because, isn't that wrong? I mean, if one can put a thousand to flight, then two should be able to put two thousand, right? But the writer is trying to teach us that when we gather together and we come into agreement, we are exponentially stronger than we are by ourselves. Um, now, since... By myself, I can put a thousand. I, I can accomplish some things. I can win some battles. I can win some victories by myself. But the writer's trying to tell us that when we gather together and we come into agreement, we're so much stronger. In fact, for those of you that are mathematically challenged like I am, I, I do understand that what he is saying is that when you're by yourself and you can put a thousand to flight, when two come together, we can put 10,000 to flight, that Help me with my math, but that means we're how much stronger? Come on, Teresa, help me, accountant. Are we five times stronger or are we ten times stronger? I don't know. We're just stronger because I I wasn't good in math. Oh, Daddy. Daddy's already com computated it without a calculator. He just went, how much stronger are we? Ten. I was right. The apple doesn't fall too far from the tree. We're ten times stronger. Okay, all right, so this is my question. Can you be victorious over the things that you're facing if you're alone? Be careful what you say, because the answer is yes. Because Paul teaches us that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. So by yourself, you can win some victories. I'm not saying that. But what I am saying is that I think way too many times we survive in situations that we are called to thrive in because we try to deal with the situation alone rather than in agreement with someone. According to what Jesus said, he said this, when, when we come into agreement, God gets in the middle of our stuff. You realize that what he's saying is that when we get into agreement with someone, that God gets right in the middle of my mess. And I don't know about you, and I don't know what you're facing, but I need God in the middle of my stuff. And the way that is accomplished is that we get together in agreement. It's at the point of agreement that our prayers are more powerful. It's at the point of agreement that we mobilize God. There, We are stronger when we're together. This is what I know. Separated, we are vulnerable. We ought to know that because the enemy works so hard to separate us. He understands this truth. Right here, catch this truth. We are fragile when we're fragmented. But when we're together, we're invincible. We're stronger. In fact, I, I, I just want to brag on y'all a minute and tell you that we have proven that together we can face death. We've proven that together. We have proven that together we can face we can face heartache. Together we can we have proven that we can face disappointment. Together we have proven that we can overcome disillusionment. Together we have we have proven that we can deal with broken together, broken families, broken homes, broken dreams. We have proven that not by ourselves. We have proven that together we can overcome anything. This body, the people in this body, just in the last six to eight months, we've faced some of the most significant challenges known to mankind. Does it get any worse than death? No. 
Does it get any worse than brokenness? No. Does it get any worse than addiction? No. Does it get any worse than sickness? No. And yet in every situation, in every circumstance, we have proven that together we're stronger than all of that. And that we can overcome all that. So together, we know this, the wisest man told us in Ecclesiastes chapter 4. Now, we always read this at at weddings because we like the last part of it. But we need to go back and read the first part of it because there's another part. You'll you'll recognize the second part because every wedding. But listen to the first part, Ecclesiastes 4.12. Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands, there it is, this is the part you know in a wedding, is not easily or quickly broken. Our defense then, according to the wise man, is wrapped up in our togetherness. We are stronger when we agree. God intertwines, he intersects, and he injects his ability and his power and his force into our relationships, and he shores us up and he strengthens us, and we become absolutely unstoppable. Now, this is how I'll close this morning. I saw this played out on national TV two weeks ago. I I went home after service, and I I do what I like to do. I sit on the couch and turn the TV on for noise, but it's the Olympics. And it was not one of my preferred events, but it's the Olympics, so you got to watch anyway, right? And so it's women cycling, and they're on this long road thing. I don't even know what you call it. This is the road course. There, road course. They're on this long road course, and the race is almost over. The, the issue is, is that it has begun to rain. And two riders, a rider from uh, the Dutch and a rider from America had broken free, and they were pulling away. They, were, they, they estimated that their speeds were at 50 miles an hour going down the long slope. The dilemma was that when they come around, they were six miles from the finish, six miles. And they come around a hairpin turn, and because of the slick roads and the speed, how many of you saw what happened? The Dutch rider, I I looked at Devin and said, she's dead. She went over her handlebars, head first into a curb, and laid motionless. And they did discover that later that she, uh, she came back with concussion and fractures in her spine. It was unbelievable. The, if there was a silver lining, it was that then all of a sudden the American rider was first. Okay, sorry, patriotism, but, you know, okay, too soon. All right, I'm sorry. I didn't want her to die or nothing, but, but I, I really did want the American to win. Her name, is, uh, her name was uh, Mara Abbott. She's in second place chasing this lady, and all of a sudden she wipes out, and the American is first. Six miles left. Here's the deal. About two miles back, there was a group of three riders, and I listened to the commentator, and he said this. With six miles left, he said this. He said, I am really nervous about Mara, the American rider, because she's all alone. And he said this statement, and it, all these alarms went off in my head. If these three riders decide to work together, she could be in trouble. And with 250 yards, two foot, two and a half football fields left, they come around the last corner and the three riders blow past the American and she ends up fourth. And you know why? Because we're stronger together. My question is this, is, is, are you racing alone? Are, are you all by yourself? I want to ask you this morning, who's in your pack? Who are you drafting behind? Who are you drafting for? You do understand the concept of drafting, right? You make it easier for somebody behind you, and somebody makes it easier for somebody because they're in front of you. We draft off of each other. That. That principle works in running. That principle works in car racing. That principle works in bike racing. That principle works in our Christian walk. We should be making it easier for somebody because somebody's making it easier for us. My question to you this morning is, are you all by yourself? Because here's the truth. You can win some victories all by yourself, but you may not win the war. 
You can run the race all by yourself. But you may not win the race unless you're together with somebody else. I love my church because we get more stuff done together. I love my church because together we're strong. I'm stronger because of you, and you're stronger because of me. So I think maybe we ought to sing a song written by the great theologian since we already sang Pulling Together and all that stuff. Maybe we ought to sing the one written by the great theologian, Barney. See, some of y'all know. Some of y'all don't know no booster band songs, but you know some Barney. I ain't even going to make you sing it. I need you. Or I love you. You love me. I don't know this and don't know. All we had to do, we could have we could have dismissed the booster band and dressed up in a big purple dinosaur outfit and everybody would remember. But he was right. We got to have each other. We got to be in agreement with one another. Father, this morning, my prayer is simply this. I pray uh, that you would continue to help us because you've already used us to accomplish so many things together. We don't want to shortchange you in that. We believe that there are many more things that you want us to accomplish, but to do it, we also know that we have to be together. I pray that our hearts would be knit together. I pray that our souls would be knit together. I pray that our mind, our resources would continue to flow together. I pray that we would we would invest in one another, knowing that together we can do so much more. God, I pray that you would make us stronger. We, I'm so proud of this group of people that we call passion because you have used us to show people that together we're strong. We've waged war against some pretty significant foes, debt and death, sickness and sorrow, pain. We've gone, we've come against those things and we've overcome things that would normally destroy each of us. Together, we locked arms and we walked through to victory. I pray that if there's one person in this building right now or watching over the internet that feels like they're all alone, I pray in the name of Jesus that you would help us to find somebody that can be a part of our passion. I pray that we, if there's one person that feels like they're going through a trial, going through a struggle, all by themselves, I pray that they would recognize and realize this morning that they're not alone. I pray that you would mobilize each of us to say the right word, to put our hand, to touch at the right moment, to put our arm around somebody at the right at the most important moment when they're about to give up. I pray that we would together learn how to strengthen one another. I pray that we'd learn to lean on one another and trust each other so that we're not walking through this life alone, that we would drive for one another, make our lives and journeys easy. I ask you to accomplish this. For your glory and for your kingdom's sake, I ask you to do this in Jesus' name. This is how I want to end this morning. I want you to find at least one person. I started to say three, but I think we get shallow when we get more than one because we don't even mess with time. I want you to find one person. So we ought to give an altar call. This is the altar call. One person, I want you to look at them and I want you to say, I'm with you. I'm for you. I got your back. Together we're going to make it through. I'll, I'll pull you. You can't pull me. You can't play with that stuff. Because they may call you in the middle of the night and expect you to live up to your word. So I'm asking you to be careful. I'm asking you to mean it. Don't do it if you don't mean it. Don't do it if they don't have your phone number. That's how we cop out. Oh, I got you, man. I got you need us and they got no way of getting a hold of us. I'm asking you to take a very practical step this morning and make a commitment before God and before someone else and exchange information if you have to to live up to what God's called you to be a family and a body. Would you do that this morning before Pastor Andrew comes and closes? Would you find somebody and actually mean it and make a connection with them? Let them know how much you need them.
How much they can trust you. It's been a privilege to have you join us for this time of ministry. To find more Passion Church resources or to make a donation online, visit www.passionchurch.tv. Remember, you can't live without passion.